Sotomayor confirmation all but certain health care reform taking center stage at the White House today in our fourth story of the countdown. The Obama administration finally pushing bipartisanship aside, challenging Republicans to get on board or get out of the way. With the Senate Health, Education, Labor and Pensions Committee today passing a health care reform package to join one the House passed yesterday, the president in the afternoon news conference chiding those who said reform would not happen and adding that work has just begun. Now, the naysayers and the cynics still doubt that we can do this. But it wasn't too long ago that those same naysayers doubted that we'd be able to make real progress on health care reform. And now, this progress should make us hopeful, but it can't make us complacent. It should instead provide the urgency for both the House and the Senate to finish their critical work on health reform before the August recess. Then President Obama citing overwhelming public support for reform, telling Congress, now it's up to you dudes. It's now up to us. We can do what we've done for so long and defer tough decisions for another day. Or we can step up and meet our responsibilities. In other words, we can lead. With the Senate legislation coming out of committee on a strict party line vote, no Republicans voting for it, even though the GOP added 160 amendments to it. Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel carving out a narrow definition of bipartisanship now. At the end of the day, the test isn't whether they voted for it. The test is whether the final product represented some of their ideas. I think it will. But the president's top political strategist, David Axelrod, warning Republicans the search for bipartisan support is ending. We'd like to do it with the votes of members of both parties, but the worst result would be not to get health care reform done. Meanwhile, the Republicans warning of the dangers of a purely partisan bill. Mitch McConnell saying from the Senate, Americans want us to work together on proposals that are likely to garner strong bipartisan support. And from Republicans. Republican Minority Leader John Boehner in the House, predictable scare tactics. What this is going to do is ration care, limit the choices that patients and doctors have, and really decrease the quality of our health care system. Let's turn now to Lawrence O'Donnell, MSNBC political analyst, Huffington Post contributor, former chief of staff of the Senate Finance Committee. Thanks for your time tonight, sir. Good to be here, Keith. What is the plus for Republicans if they continue to stay on the sidelines and reform gets passed? And I mean in asking that, besides the fact that they will continue to be afforded sustenance by their insurance and pharma overlords. Well, they get to disown unpopular parts of these bills, and these bills have extremely unpopular pieces in them. For example, very big Medicare cuts are being used or being contemplated to be used in order to pay for the rest <clears throat> of these reforms. Also, three new top tax brackets uh, just invented by the House of Representatives. Uh, I can't think of a Republican who's going to want to vote for that. Uh, and as well as an 8%, basically a doubling of the payroll tax on businesses. So that's what you're going to hear from Republicans. We don't want any part of that, and we're going to stay, stay away from that, and they will be harping on that nonstop. So they've got an agenda here that, uh, that will make sense to Republican voters when they're standing in opposition to this. Mr. Manuel has now suggested uh, Democrats might use uh, the reconciliation process to push this through simple majority votes. Is that a message to Republicans, or is it a message to the blue dog Democrats? Who's that intended for? It is a message to both, and it is a message to liberal Democrats. Democrats who desperately want to do it this way. They're tired of any maneuvers toward Republicans. What's happened at this point, Keith, is they can see the shape of the bill from the White House. The, uh, the, the Senate can see the shape of the bill. It's going to be net just about impossible to get Republican votes on these bills, and, and what's likely to come out of the Senate will also probably be impossible for Republicans. And so they're really just facing the reality of what the policies in the bill uh, are likely to get in, the, in terms of support. Did the president finally say no Moss here? Or did a preset time limit run out on the holding of the door open for the Republicans, or what happened? No, I, th I think the timing is about right. The president, they knew what the White House schedule was. They knew what the foreign trip schedule was. They knew what the markup schedule was in the House and in the Senate. And so they've timed the president's strong entry into this subject at exactly when you need it. He needs to push votes, Democratic votes, in the House Ways and Means Committee as these bills are getting marked up, Energy and Commerce Committee, also in the Senate Finance Committee, which has yet to take action. And and the Senate Finance Committee is always the place where the real shape of the bill begins, because that's where the reality is. For example, in the Senate committee that passed one today, they have no jurisdiction over t taxation or Medicaid. They have Medicaid pieces in that bill that came out of that committee. Totally irrelevant, because they have no jurisdiction. So we have to see what the Senate Finance Committee does. They're struggling to find a way to pay for this that will appeal not just to Republicans, but will appeal to all of the members, the Democratic members of that committee. And that is a very tough thing to do right now. That's where the problem is. And are there problems also, we mentioned reconciliation as the process by which this would get passed, perhaps.
Are there political ramifications for that? Are there dangers, landmines in this too? There are no longer political dangers in it because it's pretty clear you're not going to be able to get Republicans on this bill, but there are procedural dangers. There are pieces of this bill that could be ruled irrelevant uh, and, and therefore struck out of the bill uh, if it go, goes through the reconciliation process. Now, the way you can overrule that is with the magical 60 votes of the Senate in which you can do anything you want. So the Democrats may be able to get this through reconciliation and may, may be able to keep it intact because of the Al Franken 60 vote. Irony abounds. Lawrence O'Donnell of Huffington Post and MSNBC, as always, great thanks. Thanks, Keith.